Hi, Mike. It's Katerina with ASTM. How are you? Katerina who? Hey, Katerina. Uh, Great to be with you. How are you? I'm good, thanks. We have the executive committee members assembled here via YouTube, and we have our officers online. Awesome. Well, if there's uh, no objection, let's uh, call the meeting to order. Great, thank you. And I've recorded the you have the, uh, mm -hmm. Excellent. Hang on a second. I'm dealing with some zero G issues here. This doesn't happen at every ASTM meeting. Okay. Um, good. So let's see. First order of business. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Andrew, second. good to hear your voice. Anybody second? Second. Is that you, Kat? It's Mercedes. Oh, Mercedes. Hey, Mercedes. So Andrew moves. Um, Mercedes seconds. Any objections? All right, hearing none, the agenda is approved. Let's, um, I'll take a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Andrew, so moves. Second. Andrew, you're good at that. Mercedes, you want a second? Second. Awesome. Any objections? All right, hearing none. The uh, meeting minutes are approved. So, uh, new business. Actually, it's um, kind of old business because it's been going on a while, but I'm happy to report that the um, launch and the mission have been good so far. It was an unbelievable experience um, to, first of all, to witness or to participate in a launch at any time is an amazing thing. But for me, you know, after not having been here for 15 years, the launch itself and of course getting back on board the ISS is um, it's kind of this weird mix like I, I was coming home but the home has been significantly renovated since the last time I was here um, it was very really kind of inspiring and this place is so much bigger and so much more complex there's so much going on uh, the crew the ISS uh, resident crew has been very helpful with us um, our guys you know for private astronauts I'll tell you what they hit the ground running and they've been, uh, they haven't slowed since. So it's been a wonderful experience. Um, yeah, and I'd be happy to take any questions you guys about that, you guys have about that, but you can proceed if you'd like. Well, yeah, well, on behalf of the rest of the committee members, we've been following your mission closely and glad you're well and are thankful you took the time to talk with us today, Mike. Thank you. Well, guys, you know I never miss executive committee meetings, except maybe for the last six months or so. <laughs> um, who else is on, just out of curiosity, Kat? Well, Mike, we have the YouTube channel streaming, and we've invited all 100 F47 members and a lot of the ASTM Society membership. So we've been getting clues that we've got a lot of people following us live here. Um, but for the comms channel purposes, it's Mercedes, Andrew, and myself, as well as Matt and Chris Davis with ASTM. And uh, I don't know if you have your agenda oh, no. here, but I can help us get back on track if needed. No, I do. I think the next order of business is to talk about the standard guide for medical qualifications for suborbital suborbital vehicle passengers. And, um, you know, I was around when we kicked this thing off quite a while ago, and I really tip my cap to all the work uh, that James, Jim Vanderplow did as the leader of that task group, along with Richard Jennings and um, Melcher Antananu. Um, and I hear that it went through ballot and it's now being, you know, discussed, um, it's under discussion, but that's a huge effort. And um, I think the next one along those lines is to try to do something similar for orbital. We won't call them passengers, we'll call them private astronauts. And uh, I know that there's a lot of uh, experience. I think 
Smith Johnson may be involved. You know, he was a career NASA flight surgeon, now working for Axiom, as well as some others that have have a lot of experience in that. So um, I'm looking forward to that. Again, I think our object here is to find something that's reasonable but palatable to all the, uh, especially the industry members, so that they can live with it and, and abide by it, even though you know we know that um, adherence to the standards is voluntary it's better to write a standard that everybody will adhere to than to write one that's that's not so i understand we also have a lot of other standards that are still in work including crew safety spaceports classifying vehicle types i'm reading now space flight participants safety and emergency training qualification for critical systems in space flight and finally the practice for the design of orbital and suborbital space flight vehicles so I'm actually able to see email. It's not terribly um, effective like it is on the ground, but I have seen actually quite a bit of ASTM F47 traffic lately about some of those standards. So I thank all of you that are actively engaged in that. And I, I'm looking forward to re-engaging at some point, although I'm not sure how soon that'll be, but I also want to recognize you, Andrew, for all the pitch hitting that you've been doing. Um, I think I've been riding the bench for quite a while now, and I'm very grateful for your willingness to volunteer to take on that role. <clears throat> My Did I miss anything, Kat? No, perfect as usual, Mike. So I also understand that it's uh, coming up on the 125th anniversary of ASTM, which is exciting. And I want to wish um, the organization all the best for the next 125 years, if not longer. I think we have another four or five minutes, right, Kat? Yep. So we're just going to close out and we were hoping for some some um, inspiration from you and what you see as the future of F-47 and the industry to sort of continue to motivate us to to take these standards across the finish line. Well, I think this mission is a pretty good piece of evidence that commercial human spaceflight is really a, a thing now and that it's um, as a piece of commercial spaceflight in general, it really begs for us to do what we can to have industry uh, collaborate to generate these consensus standards. You know, we all are um, anticipating some sort of a regulatory environment that's going to increase here in the next not too distant future. And the more framework that we have established that can be uh, pointed to by you know, as given by the OMB circular, I think it's 119A or A119, that, that that is what we're aiming for, right? So we would like to have consensus standards be what can be referred to in government regulation. So it's incumbent on all of us and all the members of the various sectors of industry that are participate in commercial space flight to, you know, put a shoulder to the wheel and, uh, you know, our we started out pretty modestly, I guess, more than five years ago now. Um, but I feel like we're really picking up steam, and I look forward to that increasing in the future in F-47. How's that for inspiration? Love it. We're all smiling. Well, now, Mike, I'm sure you when I was, to... Oh, go ahead. Well, what I thought you were going to ask for is some inspiration, like, you know, prove that you're in zero G, which I will now. Don't try this at home. All right, with that, and with a happy 125th anniversary to ASTM, I'm signing off from the International Space Station. Bye, everybody. Bye, Mike. Thank you. Bye, Mike. You bet. Bye, Mike. Andrew, bye. It is. Bye.